Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel and this week I wanted to give you a little bit of a hobby update uh, just show you some of the things I've been painting, working on, uh, projects that I've got in mind uh, and just a couple of sort of small purchases that have come along the way in recent weeks. Uh, as you're probably aware by now, I'm still in the process of moving rooms in the house um, and I'm still awaiting receipt of some key items to get that finished. Everything is a little bit uh, of a mess at the moment uh, as I've got boxes of things everywhere, not quite sure where anything is and hoping to get everything in order in due course. But just wanted to bring you some sort of updates and material today on things that are going on here um, in my hobby world and um, hopefully you'll find it interesting. So in terms of new arrivals, um, mainly predominantly it's been some books. Um, so I actually ordered uh, uh, an Osprey Men at Arms book, uh, The Alamo and the War of Texan Independence. Uh, perhaps a bit of a clue about one of the projects I have on the go at the moment. Um, I must admit, uh, my brother and myself, we've just dived in and uh, purchased some already painted 28mm uh, figures for this period, which are looking really lovely, but need a little bit of rebasing, a little bit of rework here and there. And uh, I know my brother's got uh, an Alamo uh, sort of project on the go at the moment. So I uh, hope to bring you a bit more about that in a moment. But as typical quality Osprey publications, uh, big fan of Osprey, always have been. Um, the other book I've got uh, is from our friends at Hellion. Um, unfortunately, they keep sending me emails with sales on and uh, offers and I keep jumping in because I love Hellion books. Uh, this one particularly uh, came to mind because I watched the Napoleonic Wars podcast. Uh, I'll put a link in the show notes. It's really good. Uh, it covers lots of things to do with Napoleonic Wars. If that's, if that's your thing, I'd strongly recommend listening to it. I believe uh, it's available on YouTube as well. Um, but this particular one was all about um, the third invasion of Portugal, 1810 to 1811, and I believe um, this book was mentioned in that show, uh, and it was very interesting. So when I saw this on offer from Hellion, um, you know, it was a no-brainer really. But as always with with Hellion, uh, you know, quality publication, um, lots of really interesting photographs and. Importantly for me at the back, there's some really good all bats um, of the forces concerned. So looking forward to reading that. That's on my ever expanding uh, reading list. Um, and the second or third thing that I've purchased in recent weeks is I've jumped in on our friend uh, Sam Mustafa's next set of War Games rules. This one is Eisenhower, uh, following on from the very successful Rommel, which... We've played at the club an awful lot over the years. Love that game. Um, this one is pitched at a higher uh, sort of divisional core level, the game. Um, and looking forward to giving this a try. It's set out in the usual uh, Sam Mustafa format. Very, very easy and straightforward to understand. Uh, I've already enjoyed having a good read. And it's given me quite a few ideas of things I'd like to try. Um, I, I suppose the key thing again is this is a gridded game and again uh, what we what we might well be able to do is use our existing Rommel forces and represent them as bigger formations uh, for the purposes of this game. So Sam Mustafa from the uh, Honor um, Games Stable. Uh, this is Eisenhower Tabletop Game, Great Battles of the Second World War. Um, so some interesting little purchases there. Um, in terms of hobby items, uh, so I've already, already mix, uh, mentioned Texan War of Independence. Um, I've been doing a lot of work on, uh, or continued work on my 10 mil Spanish-Italian Wars. I'll show you a little bit more on that in a moment. Uh, some more on my 28 mil War of the Roses, um, some progress on that. And then just a few sort of fillers really, things that I'm um, just sort of enjoying painting for the fun of it um, to complement my sort of fancy uh, mythological kind of 
things that I've been building up over a number of years. So I've been working on um, some more figures. I bought a couple of figures from North Star in their sale, some draw, uh, I think that's how you pronounce it, sort of undead um, sort of lieutenants, warlords from their saga range, um, which I'm going to use with my skeletons and things like that. Um, I've got one eye on the Two Fat Lardies Midgard Battles rules that are coming out next month. Um, particular appeal for me, looking at the kind of figures I've already got in my kit bag here. Um, so I'm hoping I might be able to use my 28mm Vikings, um, I might be able to use my 28mm Late Romans, I might be able to use my Undead. Uh, there may be a number of different formats that those rules could be used uh, and utilise things I've already got. So I've already got one eye on that and a particular game that I'm thinking in my own mind I'd like to put together for the guys to play. Um, and as always, it's Two Fat Lardies. We, we know it will be a great publication and probably a cracking set of rules because most of their stuff is top draw and uh, it, it's kind of high on the on the buy list when anything is announced uh, from, from their stable. Um, but let's just zoom in uh, to the painting table and show you some of the things I've been getting up to. So, uh, we're at the painting table and as you can see here, I've got some Spanish artillery. Uh, these are my Pendraken 10mm uh, Italian Wars. And um, yeah, I've, I've kind of had a look, I managed to do a bit of research on the gun colours, the uh, carriages, etc. Um, obviously, in terms of crew, probably pretty much civilians they'd wear whatever. Um, I've opted for sort of a uh, Spanish kind of garment theme, really, with the reds and the yellows. But of course, could, could have just been plain garb, whites, beiges, whatever you want them to be. Uh, there certainly was no specific... Uh, uniform colours, I believe, in in terms of uh, artillery at this at this period. So they're virtually done. I've just got to paint the edges, and they'll go in. Um, I've got um, a mage here that I've just enjoyed painting up. Hopefully, if I can zoom that in. Sorry, I'm trying to balance the the phone um, as well. Here we go. Um, so that's just got to have the base finished. Um, but that will be uh, in my necromancer, maybe, uh, or, or 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 a character of similar ilk, um, may well be part of my Midgard setup in due course. I've had a couple of other figures on the go for a while. This one is uh, the boatman. Uh, he's an undead figure from mythology, um, and then these are the part put together. Uh, figures I got from North Star so as you can see there really nice these are a uh, gripping beast I believe or, or something of similar ilk from their saga right? age of uh, magic range some really nice kind of models there uh, there's another one uh, I think this was a warlord figure beautiful details again just got the arm with the sword and the shields and things to put on there um, and then we've got another one here. This is again another um, undead figure. Hopefully it will uh, zoom in. There you go. So again, really nice. Something a bit different. These are more just palette cleansers, uh, which I enjoy doing. And then um, we've got some more uh, Walls of the Roses uh, figures here. So just kind of uh, got those based up in line with the rest of my forces so we've got uh, another archer unit there and then we've got some more pikemen um, and you'll see i've put some of the uh, the flags on here as well um, i believe these might well have been oh, i'm trying to think now duke of norfolk maybe oh no hastings i think they might have been lord hastings uh these represent i'll have to double check that one but uh Beautiful flags, um, love these flags, always, uh, I've spoken about these before, I think they look really nice, really make the figures pop um, and add some real character. So that's uh, some two more units for Wars of the Roses, 
um, whether it be bill hooks or blood red roses, the new rules that I'm looking to try. And then uh, this was just an ad hoc purchase. Um, again, to complement uh, my Texans, for my Texan War Independence. Um, so you probably can work out that this is Davy Crockett. Um, and uh, I hope to bring you a little bit more on this project in due course once I've sort of spent some time putting it all together and uh, getting the rebasing done of the appropriate figures. But this was a lovely figure I found um, on eBay and decided to jump in and, and buy it. Um, it's quite a difficult figure actually to find now. So to find one painted and painted very nicely. Um, I thought, yep, yeah, gotta gotta have that one. Um, so that's just a little bit, some of the things going on in the hobby at the moment. Uh, for me, uh, as I say, I'm very much in transition at the moment. The hobby room is a bit of a pickle. Uh, but what I hope to be able to do, obviously, is bring you lots more material very, very soon. Uh, once my war gaming table is up and running again, uh, I'll be able to show you a bit more board game related material. Um, and perhaps once the team are back, we've got a few on holiday at the moment, uh, a few more reviews from our games as well. Um, but for now, Hope you're having a good hobby weekend and look forward to seeing you all again very, very soon.